I don't know how it started. I don't know what you did. Now I'm the gal that's chasing you up. Pull it, flip my lid. Come on, you're eager beaver, baby. Eager beaver, baby. Hello, and welcome, welcome to, to Was That an Orgy? Yeah! Starring Charlene, that's me, and Teresa, otherwise known as Teresa Bob. Two sisters that explore the topics of sex, sexuality, gender, and sex positivity in today's society. We will also <laughs> try to answer the question, was that an orgy? Today, we have The Art of Going Slow with Joseph O. Joseph, welcome to... Was that an orgy? Was it, Joseph? <laughs> That's what we really want to know. Inquiring minds want to know. Was, was this... An, Which... Was that an orgy? Just now? No. No, okay. I, can, I can answer that one. Thanks for clearing that up. Gotcha. <laughs> um... Can you start by giving us a little background before you start getting into, um, you know, going slow, going deep and slow? Yes, and, and then and then fast and deep. And then, Actually, yeah. I think it's good news. the the, <laughs> the background is there really isn't much of a background. I am just a slutty person, and <laughs> I've and I've had a lot of experience being a slutty person. Let's unite. I've I've had a bit of experience being a sex educator, and I've had a little experience being a sex worker and so a lot of what I've come to <coughs> is it's personal experience but it's reinforced that when <coughs> I talk with other people and when I uh, when I interact with other people and when I read about sex um, I see a lot of commonality mm -hmm. so I've learned that <coughs> we go too fast is the short version. Yeah. I, yeah. I tend to be wordy, but if I were going <laughs> to right, sum it right. up, we I go too I hate to interrupt you, but I have to cough because I just inhaled my water. It's worst timing. <coughs> <coughs> grandma. Sorry. Okay, we all have right, a coughing break yeah, a little for Grandma coffee. here. Not a coffee. Break. Okay, Grandma Bob, yes, are you all right? Let's I'm get back right, to Joseph. Shiny. So, yeah, you. I agree with you. We go too fast, and sometimes I think that can even come from shyness and anxiety. Let's get to the bonding. Most, most of the time. I believe mm -hmm. that. In fact, if, if I'm going to give the most positive possible read, I feel like a lot of our sexual problems come from fear, misunderstanding, hesitancy, you know, mm -hmm. um, and strangely, a hesitancy to go slow as if mm -hmm. it's not mm -hmm. enough activity or um, I'm not sure. I, I feel it too. You know, when you're not yeah. getting enough reaction the way you're touching, mm -hmm. it can be... It can feel like you need to do something different, or mm -hmm. it can feel like you have to do something more extreme, something harder or more direct, maybe. And that's right. not always the case. In fact, often it's the opposite. It's that somewhat counterintuitively, sometimes going slower can actually can actually um, have a huge impact. Actually. Yeah, yeah. And I think sometimes, like when someone gets really quiet, it's because maybe they're they're going into their mind and they're going like, "Oh wow, that's really cool. Mm -hmm. That's." That's that's amazing. That's something new to me, and that and that maybe in that moment someone wouldn't be receiving response or feedback, mm -hmm. but what's happening internally for the other person is really profound. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. And as the neurotic interjector here, I think <laughs> some of it can be as well. Like you know, we, a lot of people have a fear of intimacy, and yet that's probably the deepest, most healing internal drive is to have true intimacy. Yes, intimacy can be very scary too. Yeah. yeah. And this, and this actually, so this is, so when you have um, really intense sex that uh, lots of orgasms and it's very fun, it feels intimate oftentimes, even if mm -hmm. it's not someone that you're in love with or you have like a deep special uh, bond or attraction to. In that moment, sharing that activity with them, you do. You know, like it's like that song, Love the One You're With. Mm -hmm. I don't think that's so much a call to just rampant, uh, and totally unchecked um, <laughs> sexual promiscuity. I think it's a, I think right. it's a call to, uh, you, you know, first of all, if you're going to be having sex with someone, treat them well, and then yeah. you know maybe you don't always have to be having sex with the same person, and that's all. Yeah, right. and Being be present. mindful about uh, mindful about where you are, 
Mm-hmm. Yes, and, communication and, is very Yeah, important. so loving the one you're with could mean like, hey, I'm here with you. This is, you know, I am absolutely 100% present. In this yeah. Instance. Yeah. It's not, the song isn't fuck the one you're with. It's <laughs> love the one you're with. Yes. Yeah. yeah, so bringing your presence Although that'd be a different them. song, you know. I think we should write it. It's 2021, Let's, baby. No, we boom. can redo okay. this. Yeah. Boom, shaka, <laughs> boom, shaka. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so bringing your, your presence to the person that you're with yes. can be mm-hmm. the most profoundly fulfilling experience instead of like what, you know, we've been conditioned to do, which is oftentimes um, avoid out of fear, being seen, you know, and seeing. Yep. Powerful. It is. So mm-hmm. it's funny how a lot of the times our fears come up in the way of exactly what we most deeply desire. And, yeah. Yeah. you know, fear being rejected, I think, has yeah. something to do with that. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, fear. <sighs> so this is the, f- it's one of the, m- m- it's one of the biggest things to overcome is that feeling o- comfortable in your skin, feeling comfortable with your partner, even if it's been a partner of a long time, sometimes it can be. Mm-hmm. Um, being a partner to someone isn't just a sexual thing. So some people are fantastic partners and their sexual um, their sexual relationship isn't what they want it to be. Mm-hmm. And so what I'm advising is not like a method necessarily. It's more of kind of a meta methodology, right? It's a way to to discover what it is that you need to be doing with what, a person. Wait, what does meta methodology? We'll get to that. Okay, okay. Yeah. <laughs> so a methodology is a is a method. It's a way to do a thing. Right. And a and a meta methodology. The way I'm I'm thinking about it is a way to to go about figuring out what it is you're supposed to be doing in the first place, right? And okay. it's not read a book um, mm-hmm. necessarily. I don't think. I think reading books are great and educating yourself is great. But the other thing that I w- wanted to share is that. Understanding what a body part is called is not the same thing as understanding what a body part is. So Mm -hmm. (laughs) quizzing a person about if they know where the clitoris is isn't going to get you a good sexual experience. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A person may not not know what it's called, but know exactly what it is. That's the person you want touching your bits, right? (laughs) They may not be able to unveil it in 17 languages, but Uh they can definitely, like, work with it. And that sounds like an insignificant maybe distinction to make but i think that that is important it's important to understand that there is a reality to what is happening when you are with someone in bed and it defies your expectations and your dreams and your fantasies it's there waiting for you it's just happening you know and yeah so part of this is about <clears throat> it's about orienting yourself to the experience in a way that's going to yield you the best results right it's mm-hmm. going to Um, I can't make a lot of promises, but what I do promise is, is that if you go into the experience focusing on pleasure and on pleasuring your partner and on pleasuring yourself and on just taking the time to sit in that, you're going to have a better experience than if you spend the entire time worried about whether you're going to come or not or whether you're worried about whether your (laughs) partner is going to come or not. Not to say that you shouldn't. I don't want anyone to take that, you know, away. You should you should worry about whether your partner has a good experience for sure. Yeah. Sometimes to get that orgasm is going to be more pain than it's worth or more of a trouble that's worth. Maybe just sitting in pleasure this time mm-hmm. and getting closer to that next time is the way to go. Um, yeah. 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 I'd love to interject here because um, I was thinking about this the other day. I was like, why are we so obsessed with orgasms? Because like I was thinking about what's my favorite movie? All right. Princess Bride. Did I have an orgasm? No, I did not. Right. Still my favorite movie. Like right. you can have profound experiences mm-hmm. and that does not need to be part of it. Yeah. You can have even a, you know, extremely touching experience that doesn't need to be part of it. Like yeah. that's not that's not the end all be all of experience. No, I'm not against orgasms. So don't get mad at me. Okay, hey, everybody. <laughs> You're don't talk about, orgasm. Me about how much you, know, you I hate to like I'm not an orgasm hater. I almost have to put a like a halt. Because, like, I'm so ADD. This is the first time we've had a guest. And watching you mirrored in lag behind you, I can't even <laughs> focus on what you're saying. So I have no monitor. Is it possible, Michael, to turn off the video? And if there's a question, you just ask. Because, yeah. you know, I think that's sexy anyway. Yep. So. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I, I was, was like, enjoying it. Oh, oh. I, I can't even hear. I couldn't hear what you were saying. For yeah, no, that's, that's, that, is, that is fair. Squirrel, squirrel, I do not squirrel, have squirrel, anything squirrel. like that on this side. Yeah, so yeah. So much I was easier. like pirating you. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Um, so do you want, first, 
I'd like to talk a little bit about mindfulness, if that's okay. Yes. Because uh, that's kind of the yeah. root of all of this. So I am not an expert in mindfulness. By the way, I'm not an expert in anything. But uh, What are you, Joseph? I'm just <laughs> filling space. Um, <laughs> I love that's it. That's what he said. Perfect. Right. That's what we all do. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> Pardon me. Um, mindfulness is uh, consciously focusing on your experiences. It is taking the time to uh, take the focus away from the possibly the torrent of words or thoughts or images that you're normally subjected to and to turn maybe inward more and focus on what's happening in your body. And that's most, and it's not just what's happening in your body, it's what's happening uh, sounds. It can be, you can meditate with your eyes open, um, although it is harder, I think. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so, the way that this is useful to us is because as you begin to focus on now mindfulness has a a, a long and proud tradition in in uh, eastern meditation practices and i am very hesitant to say that this is uh this is mindfulness uh i would like to use mindfulness as a tool right it's a it's a thing that um that is just true it's a thing that you can find out for yourself which is what's kind of cool about it like the reason i like it is because i i will not deny anyone's spirituality any kind of Mm -hmm. spiritual sexual experience you think you've had uh Mm -hmm. be it uh you know if you're seeing it through the lens of the tantra or Taoist sexual practices Mm -hmm. all that is an amazing way to 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 look at these things and learn about them Mm -hmm. and they're very similar too you're gonna find a lot of similarity and in Mm -hmm. those similarities a lot of it has to do with bringing the mind back to focus on what it is that you're doing. Mm -hmm. So for Mm -hmm. example, let's say I'm with a lover and I'm worried. So what I have going on in my head is an internal dialogue or list of faults maybe that I've, uh, you know, mistakes I've made, like, oh God, I'm going too fast or whatever, and I can get caught up in that. And what I'm doing is I'm putting that experience between me and the thing that's happening here. Now I could also maybe be with someone that I've been with for a long time and I start thinking about some fantasy or some other thing that, which is totally fine, by the way. I mean, as long right. as you know, as long as it's fine, it's fine. Um, but what I'm suggesting is that there is that those things can work. There is another thing that you can try, right? And that is this: is that if you've ever done a mindful breathing exercise before, or if you've ever done um, mindfulness practice at all, any kind of you know yoga or exercise, to me, mm-hmm. is a it can be a deeply mindful experience in which your body kind of sings to you it aches a little bit it shows you what you've been using and you can kind of it, it helps accentuate helps you draw the mind in and feel what it is that you're feeling because you're you're actually really feeling it because you've been right. you know, pumping iron or whatever right and right. so that's what the focus of this is is that if we can take a moment first to and i want to talk about how we might start this with a partner right because mm-hmm. you're gonna you don't have to approach a person and say, hey, I want to do this like different sexual thing with you, mm-hmm. but you can. And, mm-hmm. I, and then actually you might get a little more mileage out of it that way. But I'm not going to propose yeah. anything here that you couldn't just spring on somebody, honestly, because this is, <laughs> I'm actually going to advise you to be more conservative. And so I don't feel, now please shout me out if you feel like I am wrong here, but uh-huh. I feel like you could sneak this in and you'd probably be okay. But, but really you should yeah. probably talk, uh, if you can, talk to the person um, yeah. because you're going to get more attraction. Now, mm-hmm. they aren't always going to be able to tell you what, what they like. Mm-hmm. But they will be able to tell you what they don't want. Mm-hmm. And that's that's really what you need to start with. The most important yeah. thing in that conversation you have to come away with is what you don't do. Right. Yeah, what you, I agree. You should listen to everything they tell you they want. Mental note. We're going to put that as plausible. Right. Because you uh-huh. haven't experienced it yet. And you're not discounting their experience. You're just going to we're going to put that in the plausible category because they haven't been with you yet. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and a lot of this doesn't have to do with how you move your hands or the way that you, um, you know, your special moves or whatever. No, you know, it's lot. not technique. It's it's intentional a lot of times. A lot of times it's intentional. Right. A lot of times the way that your energy plays with that other mm-hmm. person's, you know, I, I hesitate to use those words because they're mm-hmm. kind of amorphous, but I feel yeah. like when you meet mm-hmm. a person, you kind of mm-hmm. get a vibe off of them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so sometimes I meet a person and I can tell right away they don't like me or I can tell right away they, that they do like me. Mm-hmm. Um, some people are very difficult to read. Yeah. And mm-hmm. so... But that energy, sometimes you meet a person and you just light up and they light up and you start talking about whatever it is or, right. or and, and those same kind of commonalities happen with touch. Mm-hmm. You can meet a person who's familiar in touch. So you touch them, they touch you and you're like, oh, oh, oh right. I like that touch. Right. Uh, and then other people, it's, it's, you gotta, you gotta work a little bit more with it. So right. yeah. beginning with communication, 
is good because you're, you're first of all, you're going to get all your no-go zones. And yeah. that really is going to kind of open up the rest of it because the rest of it is yeah. just a little more methodical. And we're just yeah. going to kind of, mm -hmm. we're going to go through how to find those those yeah. feelings. Right? I find mm -hmm. that that even applies when you're in a long-term relationship because, you know, even though we uh, uphold some level of consistency, we're having different experiences from one day to the next and we need and want and feel more comfortable with different things, mm -hmm. yep. you know? So maybe one day ass play is great and then another day like, yep. ah, I had a bad burrito, I'm not so into yeah, that. Yeah. <laughs> and, and nothing feels you like, I don't know, I, I I, maybe I project a little bit on this front, but I feel like all the best sex stuff I've ever got in my life that was really good from the moment I set my eyes on it and decided I wanted it or whatever to the moment that I got it till afterwards and all and up until now, yeah. the best arc <laughs> are the ones with the with good communication where everybody gets yeah, what they yeah. want, where you're not tricking people and you don't yeah. have to. That's the other yeah. thing. Like you don't, you know, if you have a good reputation for being a decent lover, you don't have to trick people. You know, yeah. people, people want to sleep with you because it's fun. Yeah. <laughs> you know, right. like, you know, don't be a jerk. Right. So, I mean, don't be a jerk is like rule number one for a while. Yeah, lives, I think. that really is. A like, jerk don't is don't subjective, be a jerk, though. Yeah. That's, you could be yeah. a jerk, like, you know, yeah. there's some BDSM jerky stuff that's probably yeah. true. That's right. And good. some right. people might love that. Yeah. But yeah, I, I yeah, be true to who you are and, and just um, don't put on a facade because eventually you won't be able to keep it up anyway. Yeah. Right, right. Yeah. Always. And, and why both be playing a role that's not authentic, you yeah. know? It's just that's, mutual torture. That's like applying for a job you don't really want. Yeah. It's like, yeah, sure, I can, you know, I can do this for you, but do I really want to do this? Right, like, right. Nah. Yeah. Yeah, why waste people's time? Just yeah. come yeah, out And you're going to be more likely to want to do the things if you get to do them on the terms that you like. Like, let's yeah. say, let's say you want to have a sexual encounter with the person and uh, that person doesn't, um, you're not, you're not quite sure how they, how they, how they feel about you. Mm -hmm. um, be be cool, you know. Be chill. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I don't know how to. You know, uh, <laughs> giving people space and room to like get to know you and warm up to you. Anyway, this is off yeah. the topic, but it, yeah. it is kind of on topic too because it, 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 it does have something to do with the beginning. I think so too. It's, it's totally still about mindfulness. You know, it's still mm -hmm. about being present instead of. Uh, pursuing your agenda, you know, that yeah. you might have in your head and then, you know, trying to project that and make someone else fit into your little cookie cutter image of what you want to get your rocks off. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's really about being present, you know, yeah. and being co-creative to your sexual intimate experience with someone yeah. and allowing them to show up too and being uh, responsive and respectful to, yeah. you know, them showing up. Co-creative is a great word because yeah. When, so being slutty and having multiple sexual partners, <laughs> you, you can get interesting perspective on things and you begin, to see, you begin to see that, like, so when I was 18 or 19, um, I liked big boobies, right? So, mm -hmm. uh, and then I was with someone who had big boobies for a really long time and, uh, and then I wanted, I thought I wanted something else and I wanted something else and, and every time uh, some new thing would be like, become hotter and hotter and hotter. And then if I was able to get it, it would just kind of like, and then I, if I have it all the time, it it, be, it doesn't mm -hmm. become, you know, something I don't want, but it certainly isn't the same, you know, cherry, novel. perfect, novel mm -hmm. thing yeah, that I was right. reaching for. So when you when you see this pattern yeah. and you get ahead of yourself a little bit and you start to look and you go, okay, well, what is it that I really want? What mm -hmm. is it that I, what, what brings you back every time? What, mm -hmm. And you know what? It's never, for me, and this is, I don't want to, I never ever want to ruin anybody's sex parade ever. But for <laughs> me, life got a lot simpler and a lot, there were a lot less like accoutrement. You know, there's a mm -hmm. lot less uh, performance and there's a lot less emoting and other things that I have to do and a lot more just kind of like trying to be um, present in the moment. And, and I'm another reason why I'm saying all this, too, is this is hard for me. Right. The, I, I lucked out that I have I have ADHD brain, but I also. Yay. yay. <laughs> Ooh, I love ADHD brain. It's the best. Well, She's married also, two of us. So it's a, <laughs> <laughs> I just keep going back to that. Well, <laughs> people who will not stop talking. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. Go mm, ahead. Sorry. Not sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. Not sorry. Mm -hmm. um, I don't remember what I was talking about. Oh, <laughs> squirrel. High five. Well, yeah. yeah. Sure. Well, what, what was the other ADD person talking about? Good uh, Lord. Oh, that's crap. fine. We can move on. Yeah. Um, so, <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, I, so let's, let's talk about, um, 
do you want to do a mindful breathing exercise? Yeah, sure. Yeah, that sounds right. super awesome. Mm -hmm. So I am not a meanful, uh, mindful breathing. I've got my little notes here. Mm -hmm. I am not a mindful breathing exercise coach. This is not a thing I do uh, when I'm going to have sex with someone. I merely want to <laughs> offer people, you and, and people who may be watching, an opportunity, if albeit an amateurish one, to experience mindfulness, to experience what it feels like to just focus on your body for a little while mm -hmm. and uh, and then get a little verbiage around it that I have found helpful. I've picked up places. Yeah. So. Okay, and the one so. disclaimer so. I want to make is if you're driving your car, do not close your eyes. <laughs> I was going to say that. <laughs> oh, see, hive mind. God, yeah, it's yeah. a double <laughs> twin. You know, save this for when you're at home yeah. Yeah, yeah, in yeah. a stationary place. Just don't yeah. close your eyes. Preferably not piloting anything or operating <laughs> yeah. any machinery. Yeah, yeah, yes. yeah. Um, exactly. Because the first yeah. thing is close your eyes, which is, okay. which is, uh, all right, so, so you guys, do we you do guys, that? Yeah, okay. you do that. We're uh, going to do it. Now, while you're doing this, traditionally, you sit up and you can clasp your hands in your lap or whatever. Feet okay. flat on the floor is typically suggested not to slouch. Slouching is a sleepy activity. It's going to bring your brain uh, not where you want it. Okay. Um, you, it's important to be comfortable. So be comfortable. If you're not comfortable, you can move. My uh, tailbone's a motherfucker. Okay, so here we go. Yeah, no, I'm getting you can comfortable. Just squirm. Right. Yeah, squirm all you want. Adjust. Um, so now we're gonna take a we're gonna take a big deep breath, and we're gonna take a couple big deep breaths. <sighs> Is it helpful to do like the dragon breath thing from yoga, where you sort of breathe in through the nose and not let the it? Nose? Yeah, and let it. Um, Sit on your breath a little. Yeah, let it let it kind of sit in the back of your throat a little bit, or no? It, it um yeah, so that it seems to raise the pressure and the uh, blood pressure in the body a little bit, which is which is fine. Kind of into the head, and then you release, okay. and you can kind of feel that release of pressure. I think the point of this particular exercise is to just we're going to get into the get into the breathing. Okay, I've been told I have dragon breath before, but I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> yes, but that's why we have so much separation between that's us. That's because of your garlic. No, thing. don't need to worry about it. <laughs> <I'm damned. laughs> So Sorry. part of this is a, this is one, just of those, one of the quiet me. exercises. Sorry. Sorry. Okay. All right. You can kind of let your breath become more natural. Mm-hmm. When we do this, we're going to gradually just focus on the sensation of breathing. mind starts to wander. I feel like Terry Gross. You feel like Terry Did, did she do this too? Gross. Sure <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sorry. Grossy Gross. I'm very distractible. Welcome to. This may not work. I do feel relaxed. <laughs> I feel like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I can only go too deep. <laughs> so while you're doing this. Okay. And this is actually helpful. So yeah. this may not be possible to do right now. It but might be yeah. hard yeah. with the body. But as you go, mod, if you can go, if the you can go find mod a, sisters. Yeah. Yeah. Sisters, yeah. It, it's okay. It's mm -hmm. a little awkward to try and do with your eyes closed on a, on a podcast. Yeah. What I will say is if you can go mm -hmm. find um, an app out there that you like that will walk you through a mindfulness breathing exercise, it, it's helpful to have someone walk you through it. It's helpful to have someone mm -hmm. walk you through it, even if you're experienced at it, because that's just one less thing your brain has to do is um, to remind you to return back to the body. And what you're doing is you're just focusing on the feelings that are happening inside your body. Mm -hmm. So you're, you're focusing on typically the breath. Uh, that is an autonomic function of our body that we can control to a certain extent, which mm -hmm. gives us, once you've been to work with that, you can influence your body, right? It's, yeah. it, to me, it doesn't feel like magic. Maybe it is magic. To me, it feels it like- It kind of is. Uh, yeah. th th sorry, sorry. This ability Dude, to you harness your intention and to focus it on things it enhances, mm -hmm. first it enhances the sensation of the thing. So if you do this long enough, you will begin to feel euphoric in your mm -hmm. breathing, meaning your chest will start to feel lighter and you may giggle a little yeah. bit and be like, okay, which can be a little disruptive actually. That might be where I got to. 
actually. I was noticing the sensations on my skin, and I was like, I'm feeling silly. And you know, Let's being get ADD, silly. my mind just kept thinking about drivers, like, you know, <laughs> going off the road and <laughs> relaxing too uh, much. And, and in yeah. today's news, 20 yeah. drivers on Highway 26 simultaneously veered off the road into oncoming traffic. Exactly. As long as they all had erections. And on spontaneously them. came at the same <laughs> time. Like, yeah. All died with boners. Let's yeah. just tie it together. I hope I'm not jumping ahead, but, like, you know, are you – kind of recommending that this is the the beginning of having like a a mindful sensual experience with another person is that you do this together uh you, so you can you can and okay. often what i so i won't do something like follow a script that's why i had to write this down because i don't do it um <laughs> <laughs> but what i will do is i'll say breathe you know breathe mm, yeah. and that can be a powerful thing now I read a book about mindfulness and hypnotism uh and it was written by a hypnotist and they were comparing the two modes this is a real i don't know anything about hypnotism but a, a per, per, per uh, respected person in mm-hmm. the field. Okay. And they what they were doing is talking about scripts that they had found for mindfulness and then breaking down the script and then putting it into uh, hypnotist jargon to help. Hypn- this is a book for hypnotists to understand mindfulness, right? Which mm-hmm. was kind of interesting okay. to read it. I'm neither of these oh, yeah. things, by the way. So <laughs> right. I just got to flip through yeah. it. And one of the things that struck me is that hypnotists talk about um, the permissive voice and the passive voice, I think, okay. and, which has to do with they'll ask you or try and intuit how you prefer to be instructed. Do you mm-hmm. like to, to say, you know, when you feel like it, breathe deeply into your chest and you know <laughs> as, as the as the feeling settles upon you you know do this or you know breathe deeply breathe deeply is an authoritarian oh, yeah. uh, it's not yes, a yes. bad thing but some yeah. people respond to that they just they just yeah. want to be told Directive. they don't want you to yeah. fritter around with a bunch of fancy words yeah. they just want you know this and right. so getting a sense of of that with your partner might be good like just saying mm-hmm. breathe may not be what they want to hear you know so mm-hmm. they may want to be led more gently into these sorts of things mm-hmm. so these are the kinds of things that it's good with the communication part which we're still we're still at uh, we're still <laughs> out there um <laughs> that's good <laughs> so so now i want to talk a little bit about intention and goals and the difference between intention and goals mm-hmm. if if they're could said to be said to be one and i actually had a nice long conversation with a friend about this um she didn't feel like there was a, an adequate uh, division of them when mm. I was first trying to kind of um, to put my finger on why I believe there is a difference between um, and so what I would suggest is the difference between setting goals and, and creating intentions is that when you set a ne- like so creating the nest of intentions is what I call it is doing the work beforehand the communication the massage the yoga we'll talk a little bit about that mindful embodiment and stuff like that to get you prepared, get you in the right mindset, to mm-hmm. get you and your partner like dialed in where you're you feel safe and feel like the thing that you want is the thing that's going to happen. Mm-hmm. All of those things are the work that you do because you want to have an orgasm, right? Now, mm-hmm. if what you're doing is just thinking, I want to have an orgasm, I want to have an orgasm, I want to have an <laughs> orgasm, I want to have an orgasm, it's going to be probably a little bit harder. It's like he's yeah. a mind reader, sure. <laughs> I know. Right? You know me. No, yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> it's a, I mean, it's, well, it's, I mean, I've, I've had that before, you know, yeah. like, so it's it, it can be frustrating and i don't think it leads you to good behaviors anyway yeah. um, mm-hmm. because it tends to lead us to move faster it tends to mm-hmm. lead us to we're, just, we're gonna bang against it until it and we get enough sensation to make it happen and mm-hmm. um so by creating this kind of uh material kind of case right where yeah. we, we have we have our intentions you know i'm going to be nice we're not going to do bdsm today because that's a different thing you know this is this is maybe a little softer um mm-hmm. so everyone's on the same on the same page and then lastly comfort right mm-hmm. the room should be warm enough there should be enough pillows on the bed we are getting God, older yes. friends yeah. not all of you some of you may be young and spry right. but the rest of us need pillows so We've got poor circulation okay. get your lube pillows. get your condoms you don't want to get up room temperature the volume of the music yeah. the level get of the joint, lighting whether or not there are audible conversations happening yeah. nearby all those things yeah. yeah and the better you yeah. can make it look you got kids yeah. whatever you, you can only do so much but right. yeah the more that you can do on like if you want to have a special experience with someone let's say you have someone you want to try this with for you got reasons right you have mm-hmm. reasons you want to do this this isn't just <laughs> i want to have a big orgasm like me right. and this person need to do something different or want to try something different make give it your best shot you know give yourself yeah. the mm-hmm. best possible shot don't just rush it make you know make your bed <laughs> or whatever especially <laughs> since uh, women's sexual response you know initially for women it's relaxation yes that's oh why God, like yeah. you know massage you know soothing our bodies is like the best foreplay is because that's our, you know, initial sexual response. I mean, do you want to do the rest of this? Because you got this. That's oh, right. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, you go, you go. No, we were, yeah, we were having this conversation earlier where 
you were talking about just that sort of making space. And I think making space allows for opening. Mm -hmm. And that's that I think is what f like female cisgender females and and in general females need to do is just like open. And and I think men need to open too. Like yeah. you just people Period. Okay, let's just say people need to open. Like I'm trying to degender this space. because my yeah. my experience is with women. I am mm -hmm. I am a cisgendered male. I'm a heterosexual. You know, there's a lie. I wish I wasn't because I fuck <laughs> a lot more people. Um, <laughs> And but, you'd be uh, a like, much better oh slut if you yes. were not a heterosexual. I might not be alive, but I would definitely be just like not enough hours in the day. <laughs> there, yeah, you'd be exhausted from all the fucking you do, but yeah. <laughs> yeah so I, so maybe not, but uh, if, if you hear any normalizing language, I like I, I, I would like to say maybe typical or something, and only really to say to point out that it doesn't really matter. Like people are so. Yeah. weird and really just embrace the word weird like every time I'm with a new partner they always have something there's something yeah. it's, I, yeah. I don't mean like stick a finger in my For ear sure. while you you know call me pappy or and I mean like <laughs> like they're like you know uh you know my some part of why did you just or, out me that's such a dick move oh, dude. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I thought you would just play it cool I didn't know you were gonna like <laughs> <laughs> dig into our childhood <laughs> yeah Fuck. yeah well, deaf pappy man so hard to get over that guy uh. <laughs> that well, that is one of the challenging things. I think that you know, at least I find myself really having to be very careful and intentional about is like the language, you know, because mm -hmm. we all come from our own experience and we want to be respectful. To um, this is an incredible time where we're just having this amazing, you know, kind of like expansion. The great in peeling our, back, yeah, mm -hmm. of to see our, what's underneath. Our, you know, mm -hmm. terms. You know, our our pronouns and, and gender identification and, and you know, sexual preference and everything. And so, yeah, you'll find me, like, totally deep-throating my foot a lot. Oh, yeah, know, and that's a struggle. Oh, but shit, did I say that again? Damn it. Just but we're all growing. We we're a part of this evolution, yeah. so we got to, you know, make room for mistakes. Yes. Anyway. So allow for our corrections. Boom, shush, shush. Right. Yeah. And our erections. Yeah. And yes. Directions. Yeah. And sorry to distract you. No, no. That's what Lady uh, boners encouraged. Yeah. By the way, I'm doing so good at interjecting with all the dirty jokes that come to my mind. You should. Good oh, job. God. Dude. Can't it's really him, hard. Can't let no them get pun away. Intended. I'm like, <laughs> 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 oh, no. Teresa, let the man talk. Yeah. <laughs> okay. But anyway, don't choke on that note, dirty jokes. <laughs> real air. <laughs> don't choke too much. <laughs> yeah. Well, the good thing is you have notes. So if I'm I really do. horrible, I had to bring notes because I don't. Wouldn't have. I don't know what to talk about. So once. Once we're there, we've 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 set our our intentions up. Now again, you can sp you don't really have to because we're not doing anything crazy here. Um, so we're going to start with the mindful approach, and the mindful approach is in both the giver and the receiver. I'll just talk about it that way, right? You have the person in this scenario. You're going to have a person who's relaxing, who has, probably has their eyes closed, and you're going to have a person who's touching them. We're just going to do hands to keep it simple. Mm -hmm. So while you're touching this this person right you you close your eyes like you are like when you're meditating and you can breathe like when you're meditating and you focus on your breath first because that's familiar but then you focus on the sensation in your fingertips and when for me when i run my fingertips like lightly over things and can like feel the texture of them it's pleasant to me right it's pleasant mm -hmm. it can actually like mm -hmm. feel like tickly on my fingers mm -hmm. that's it that's mm -hmm. the trick right mm -hmm. i mean there's really not much more to it so it's pleasant, so I'm doing it. And I figure, I, I, I think about how it must feel on the other end, like I've had people touch me this way, mm -hmm. lightly and gently. Now, mm -hmm. lightly here, I'm going to use the term lightly relatively. And I'm going to use the term lightly relatively because n I want to stress that there's no such thing as a technique. Like there's no such thing as a universal thing mm -hmm. that's going to work for people. Right. I have a lover who does not like being touched lightly. Mm -hmm. Like mm -hmm. in one place, yes, but yeah. everywhere else, not so much. They want grabby <laughs> touch, right? So yeah. when I say touch lightly or when I say they go slowly or when I say do these things, I mean that you, when you're in, in, this, in this time bubble, Mm -hmm. that you are lucky enough to be touching this person's naughty bits. There's going to be some <laughs> level of slow movement. Yeah. At, and there's going to be some level of fast movement. And you want to spend yeah. as much time down at the lower end of what is tolerable mm -hmm. as possible. And that's yeah. a very long-winded way of saying not everybody likes to be tickle touched. So, yeah. so you yeah. have to, but you have to start with the lighter touching. Right. So you have somewhere to go from there. Right. Yeah. And, you know, it could even be seen as like even – a gentle present and like you know being a massage therapist all my adult life practically in massage school they called it listening with hands 
Mm-hmm. You know, so you you, you you have intention when you put your hands on another person. And again, without that agenda, like, you know, in the beginning of our massage school experience, you know, everyone's insecure and they're trying to, you know, like not transfer their insecurity into another person's body. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. so they started saying, like, you know, um, explore and listen with curiosity. Touch mm-hmm. with curiosity. Yeah. That, yeah. Is, that is another huge tip is to touch with yeah. curiosity. Yeah. Yeah. That's you funny. To you, to hear. You're saying listen with your hands. And I always think of it as seeing with my hands. But I think it's the same thing. I think yeah. you're doing the same thing. Yeah. It's just like the way that your brain is wired to. Yeah. Response. And even though they called it listening with hands and massage call, like, you know, I became so present and observant that I would also watch someone's breathing. Uh-huh. I would watch reactions in their body. You're giving, you know? my, you're giving my whole thing away. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't need me. They yeah. just needed me to come to no, be an we extra did. person. We, did. Here. we totally did. We just needed yeah, a hot guy yeah, to I come hang out with us for a while. while. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's actually a good hmm. point is that there's a lot of transferable skills in this world. So mm-hmm. I thought of a dumb one the other day because I knew I was going to come on here and I was thinking mm-hmm. of things to say. And I was out picking blackberries. Mm-hmm. And I realized that there's a lot in common with being a good lover and picking blackberries successfully. Hell yeah. If you go too fast, you were going to get hurt. Yeah. Um, if you <laughs> grab something that's not ripe yet and yank on it, what's going to happen is you're going to let go of it and the whole thing is going to go that way and the one that was ripe is going to fly off into the bushes. <laughs> all right. So there's all kinds of ways that <laughs> yeah, going yeah. too fast, it, or, you're, or I was doing it in shorts because I'm stupid. So I, you have to go slowly and like crunch down the blackberries in front of you and around you so you don't get, you know. So this metaphor is getting tortured. What I'm saying is... I was going <laughs> to add to it, though. I was going to yeah. say, and if you pick the one that's just like, you know, a juice cluster waiting to be plucked and it melts in your hands, you better eat that right yeah, now. You got to eat it right now. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> just saying. It's like two for me, one for the basket. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, there's always more, so that's nice. <laughs> Love um, it. <laughs> so... Uh, so using a mindful uh, approach, preserving sensation. So this is moving from the slower to the faster, moving from uh, the less intimate, a hand massage, a neck massage, a foot massage, inward to more intimate areas, um, and to understand that we feel, like we have all these different kinds of nerve endings. I'm not a doctor, but you can feel um, light, like a, a frictional touch. You can feel pressure. Like there's different nerve endings in your body mm-hmm. that are assigned with different tasks. And when mm-hmm. you're lighting up all different nerve endings all at once in the vagina, as hard as you possibly can, there is nowhere to go. You <laughs> just blew all of everything you had. It's gone now. It's done. You got to li- you got to let that shit rest. Maybe play with her head for a minute or give, play with her boobies or me. But right. you have to. Or yeah, instead, if what you do is you go um, light. Okay, so we have now all that, all those um, nerve endings that respond to pressure are Mm. sitting there waiting and they're getting anxious because they feel that there's a little pressure there, but they're like, oh, I'm just making all this up, by the way. But this is what it feels like. It feels like when you're touching here, over here, you know, the left leg, if you're you're on the, the inner thigh over here, the inner thigh itself is not always the most erogenous area in the body. But mm. what is erogenous about it is it's not your clitoris. That's that's it's the right part about door. it's right next to it. <laughs> yeah. Now, if all you do is suck on a girl's left labia for two hours, I got maybe something amazing will happen. <laughs> yeah, yeah, maybe. Yeah. But I, I feel like you're gonna have maybe a little more movement than that. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, but doing that for a little, even if that isn't their spot, the yeah. fact that it's like right next to what they're, or maybe it is, yeah. and yeah. you won't know until you do know. Yeah, get if a you try. if you don't know what all the the bits and the parts are, that's fine. You can look it up, or you could just use your hands. Yeah. Just use your hands. Now, yeah. knowing what they're called is useful for communication, right? Mm. It's not mm. dumb to know what all the things are called. All I'm, I'm not trying to say that. I'm just saying that don't let your education get in the way of knowing stuff. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Go and learn some things with yeah. your partner, with a real human, okay? Don't look in a book and say, oh, you're not, you're coming wrong. I'm mm-hmm. supposed to be able to touch this thing and you're yeah. supposed to do this. That's mm-hmm. not how it works, right? Right, right. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. Well, I wanted to even uh, do a call back to our episode before last where we were kind of like talking about affairs for a while. And I was talking about the basis of human addiction is actually anticipation. Mm-hmm. And that's like I think that's a huge like erogenous zone. And everybody is mm-hmm. like you don't just go in and jackhammer the clit or the dick or whatever. Mm-hmm. You know, it's creating that anticipation. We love feeling desire. Mm-hmm. We love it when, it, you know, it can start gently and then like work up to where we want it when you when you are able to want it before you have it it makes the having it all that much more 
uh, pleasurable, erotic, yeah. delightful, satisfying. Mm -hmm. So that's what I think you're kind of talking about. Yes. Is well, that's yeah. the thing. Creating I the anticipation. Never understood as a horny. This is the thing. Maybe someone can explain to me someday. But like, I was the <laughs> horniest 18 year old boy or 16 year old boy or whatever. <laughs> and when, I, in those rare occasions when I could get a beautiful woman to come and wanted to be in a room when there are no parents and no one around and they're <laughs> going to touch my penis. <laughs> the idea of coming and then leaving. I was like, no, 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 no. Don't touch my penis yet. Let's uh, play Yahtzee or something. Like, you're going to stay, right? Like, let's touch boobies. Let's do other <laughs> things. Because you finally, like, they smell good and they taste good. And why wouldn't you want to, like, keep them forever? So that's right, where right. you learn foreplay, y'all. Like, then they don't have to go away because right. you could just keep, you know, Make it last. Keep making yeah. it last, yeah. Mm -hmm. keep, keep touching bits and going, what, you know, what happens when I do this and what mm -hmm. happens when I do that? And yeah, it's like, it's like you're just exploring them. Yeah. That's, Especially that, that age. You're in your fun. formative years of, you know, yeah. just beginning to unwrap, <laughs> unfold, and Relationships explore. lasted a week, okay? Mm -hmm. You're having <laughs> sex, that be, you know, like, I mean, that was, that was, yeah. Three yeah. months is a long-term oh, relationship yeah. when you're that age. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> and sex can last, you know, seven seconds when you're that age. So it is good to make it last yeah. afterwards you're after like, the fact. You touch it. And you're like, ah, oh, why is my hand wet? <laughs> oh, wow. <my God. laughs> <laughs> right. Exactly. Yeah. Totally. Mm -hmm. okay. So um, yeah. be consistent is another thing. So mm -hmm. uh, again, starting from the outside, working in, starting slow, moving to faster, staying in slow as long as possible, right? Mm -hmm. Not not getting to the end uh, uh, super quickly. And then finding, now this is a this is a tough one because we're, you've brought up, like you like to, you're, uh, when you're giving a massage, you're reading the body with your hands, yeah. breathing. Uh, when you get into sex, there's sex noises, right? Sex noises are great. Sex noises, because they help you you know, it's like, ooh, ooh, ah, ah, ee, ee, ooh, like, ee, ee, you know, and you're gonna, you're trying to find the, oh, and you don't want that one. Yeah. And so they, they can help guide you. They aren't always there. They aren't yeah. always there mm -hmm. sometimes. So the breathing, and this is a, this is a really important point about breathing. Breathing, and I, this is again something that I j just, I don't know if this is true. It works really well for me. Mm -hmm. If you use breathing as a metronome, mm -hmm. and you, and you think of it musically, and, you, and I know nothing about music either, but if you think of it as a beat. Okay, mm -hmm. I know what the beat is, and, and and if a person is breathing at a certain pace, you can touch them just a little slower than that pace, just a little slower. That's mm -hmm. a trick. I mean, you can touch them at that pace; it's fine, but just a little slower, just to leave a little extra, or mm -hmm. at a half beat. So if they're going like that, you're going even slower, mm -hmm. so that you're you're hitting at every other one or double mm -hmm. time, right? Mm -hmm. So paying attention to your partner's breathing and using it as a guide for not only. A, it, look, it may work because it's a secret thing mm -hmm. or something, or it may just work because it holds you to a specific cadence, and and then when you, you when you select a new one, it's a multiple of that. So it yeah. feels mm -hmm. natural because we're used to music yeah. and dance, and our body likes to do those things. Yeah. So yeah. why does it work? I don't know why it works. Well, it, it sounds does work, like though. to me that it's it's a it relates to that building anticipation mm -hmm. more. Like you know, if they're if you're um, seeing their body react in a way and you sense what it wants, but mm -hmm. you don't like give it up, you don't do exactly that, then it's gonna fill up with more and more desire. Yes. Mm -hmm. And so the more you tantalize the bite of cake, you know, everyone mm -hmm. wants to have their cake and fuck it too. But the more you can, you know, mm -hmm. tease them with it, mm -hmm. then yeah. the more the desire is gonna build. And then when you finally get your mouth on that cake, it's yeah. gonna be Incredible. Absolutely. Negative yeah. space. You gotta leave space. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I Lure think what, also what you're talking about is is like being an active listener. Their breathing is is like talking to you and your timing and response mm -hmm. is saying, Yes, I hear what you're saying and you're mm -hmm. saying this mm -hmm. and it's an interplay and because timing, they will move yep. to your movements and you yeah. will you I find that I react, so as I get into it, I'll make noises and breathe as yeah. they're making noises mm -hmm. and breathe, and yeah. I'll, I'll actually mm -hmm. feel things right before they happen. I swear this is where I feel like I have like a half second ESP or something, like because right? I'll do something and I'll make a noise. I remember with a with a, a partner I was with for a very long time. She told me, you know, you would make noises like right before I would make the noise, you know, because yeah. I just knew her well and I yeah. knew like slowly yeah. building up, and I know where the point we're going is. I've been there before, right? So I just I can I, you know. You, you you know where you're at. Yeah, um, you're like a tour guide. Yeah, you know, we're about to go around the corner. Yeah, but you can Sexual always learn new things too. Can we add that to your resume? Sex Sherpa. Yeah, I'm not good at high altitudes. Unfortunately, <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm pass out. Um, Speed looking. So, 
What's that? I said spelunking. Spelunking. Yes. <laughs> okay. Both little hats. Um, so on, on the topic of being consistent, one way I like to think of it is making uh, what I like to think of as somatic contracts, soma being mm. the body. So a somatic contract I think of is like if I'm doing a thing to someone, I'm touching them at some specific in some specific way, and then all of a sudden I go, wham, 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 you know, or whatever, which is an extreme um, yeah. example. Yeah. It would be shocking, it would be jarring, even slightly, like if you're doing this and all of a sudden you you move to something just a little bit, sorry, more, it can be jarring. So yeah. trying to find that natural multiple, like a, musically speaking, using music is a huge benefit on this mm -hmm. front, um, finding the right kind of music that your partner and you jam out to right. and using that to guide you. And it's, it's it can become kind of a dance and if you're the receiver, a lot of time the receiver doesn't even notice that it's happening to the music because mm -hmm. they're yeah. they're you know attempting to to receive. So um, mm -hmm. that I have, oh, that one is a huge one for someone whose brain goes squirrel. You know, it's mm -hmm. like because the beat <laughs> will bring me right back around. I right. oh gotta catch that beat and I can do it. Yeah. You know, even my brain can squirrel for like half a second and bring me right back with the beat. Yeah, so that's good. That's my brain worked like that through all my years of massage therapy as well, is that music really helps me to find a flow mm -hmm. and finding a flow that's good for me and my client. And, you know, definitely that's an important aspect between you and your partner as well as finding music that they like yeah. as well. Because I've had some clients show up on the table and be like, can you get rid of this, like, blue whale farting <laughs> sounds in the background <laughs> and the dolphins? <laughs> you know. Hard to get laid to blue whales farting. Yeah, that. exactly. Or even don't, get a massage and like it. Don't yeah. It. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. anyway. And that, yeah. I mean, that is really the whole uh the whole thing i before I, I i bombarded you with a with a big sheet thing that i had filled out because i was working on some <laughs> some class material for an in-person class and stuff and um i wanted to break it down to something small in fact i maybe i'll write this down and mm -hmm. and we can give it out or something because again don't you know if you see don juan on the road kill him okay there's no there's no secret <laughs> yeah. P you know, because people ask, that's what they ask me. That's yeah. the questions that I, like, when when I interact with people in a, in a like, in a sexual, because we go to sex parties and stuff uh, yeah. and things like that. And um, that, or when I was a sex worker, I, I had a, a client who liked to have her friends come to learn stuff. And yeah. it was really cool. But they would always ask me, you know, like, the same kinds of questions. And they were more about, like, a move or, like, some, like, trick or something. Okay, I have a question so, yeah, already. Yeah. I'm going to ask the same question. Go okay. for it. Okay. Uh, so... I don't know that much about Don Juan, and I think like he was just like the the world's greatest womanizer, supposedly, right? <laughs> like, sure, pretty much. Okay, yeah. yeah. So you're saying kill the womanizer, and no, so I'm just saying if you meet people I mean, not, that are yeah, sex really, parts, and they're going to tell you speaking, how they right, you right. how you're going to do it. There is no right way. You're trying, yeah, to, you're so trying like to a guy them. who says, "I'm going to rock your world." Say, "No, you fucking aren't." <laughs> I, I guarantee you are not going to rock my world if you think you're going to rock my world. But sex worker, can you can you sort of like give a broad general? Because I think a lot of people when they hear sex worker, they think like prostitute on the corner, hmm. whatever. Can you give sort of like what what you include in that definition? I was curious about that, too. Yeah. Oh, thank you. sure. Um, yeah. So uh, I was married for a while and then I uh, got divorced and started dating and I w was dating a few people and I wanted to date with a with a nice person who we were dating for a little while and I think she caught on that like I wasn't like super into her but I liked you know playing with her and that was cool and everything but she was a busy person she found someone else this person was into her and she was attracted to him and she so she texted me and or we talked on the phone or something but anyway it was really nice and I said hey good luck that's great you know she said I'm not gonna have a lot of time to hang out anymore and I was totally okay with that and then she texted me back a couple weeks later and I said hey how's it going how's your fella and she was disappointed uh in their sex and mm -hmm. But I think she realized that I think we had like three dates and we hadn't really had like sexual interaction, right? It was mostly I would touch her and she would have an orgasm and then she'd be kind of like tired or something and she would want to go and that's fine. I was dating a lot of people. I was okay with it. Um, <laughs> and it's fun. And so she goes, so do, how would you feel if I just paid you? And I, I was like... Uh. Was it, would that make you feel better? And she goes, you know, I think it would because oh. I think you're a great guy. I really like you. I want you to be happy. I want to give back to you. Uh, but I want to just be selfish. Like, I really like right. that I don't have to think about giving right. you that. That I can give you I something want a different. starfish. Yeah. 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 I want, yeah. yeah. So if I pay you 150 bucks, I can starfish. starfish. That, that makes sense to me because yeah. I think that a lot of, you know, this is probably 
you can tell me, but you know, this is probably the same for women and men. But I think, you know, for women, especially like modern women who feel like, you know, again, it's as soon as we're born into the world, we're handed a baby doll and we're like, nurture everything, make it happy, be <laughs> selfless, you know, don't value your time and, you know, yeah, your, right. your skills. So then, you know, there's this uh, high sense of responsibility to be your worth comes from taking care of other people. Mm -hmm. And so that's a great way of giving yourself permission to be self-absorbed, to be direct, to, mm -hmm. you know, uh, communicate all of your needs and wants without feeling guilty. Yeah. yeah. It's like, I'm just, it. I just want to pay yeah. you. And she could just yeah. sit, she would sit and talk to me beforehand or like she would have an orgasm and, and you know, she's like a refractory period. So she wanted to sit and talk and she was very mm -hmm. talkative. She'd do the play by play mm -hmm. <laughs> and then she would come with ideas and things she wanted to yeah. try. And it was, it was yeah. really cool. It was really. Did she pay you for the talking time too? Um, I, uh, the way I operate is that I didn't have a flat rate. What I said to her, cause I had to think about it because mm -hmm. I had never really thought about it before and I'm not much for, um, the market, shall we say? Mm -hmm. And so I felt bad. <laughs> if, I, I like sex and I, I want to help people. And so what I said was, look, if you can afford it, you can pay me what you think you can afford. And, mm -hmm. and a sliding scale. Yeah, it was totally a sliding scale. Wow, really so you're well. like, OHSU <laughs> for pussies? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I just was focusing on the metaphor of sliding scale. Anyway. <laughs> That's where my mind goes. No, but, I, went, I anyway. went full Portland with that. <laughs> <laughs> but we distract, we digress again. Yeah. Go on. So she uh, eventually told a few people about me, and then I started um, seeing some people from FetLife and things like that, and just mostly through friends and other people, because mm. that's the other part of it, too, is that I think sex work for women, which is a whole different topic, but I think that's, it's exactly what you said. It's like uh, all those conditioning traits that you just said. Also, yeah. it's kind of like going out and getting um, your needs met in that way in this culture not accepted now there are other cultures mm -hmm. and i'm not going to pretend i i can name them i've, I've mm -hmm. heard but i i that they where sex work for women is not frowned upon mm -hmm. and so i think there is hope i don't think that's some internal mm -hmm. um thing and i think it would i think it is particularly effective for the reasons that you stated is that there's a it's it's the same reason like a a powerful person wants to go and release power right mm -hmm. or a person totally. who you know um we all kind of want to find that release oftentimes in that thing that we just can't seem to get Right. I watched a documentary about, uh, you know, a BDSM dungeon in New York City, and it was like all these high-ranking CEO men, yeah, sure. you know, yeah. millionaires, high-power positions, and they just wanted a place where they could yeah. release. And yeah. and, I won't, and I won't make fun of those people because that kind of release, that kind, like, there's a gravitas and a levitas to uh, to what I would call exchange mm -hmm. kinds of play. And What's a gravitas gra this like and a levitas? Latin, this gravity and levity, right? Oh, is okay, that, that makes yeah. sense. Is that kind of paradoxically I think you know I, I talk about what I call the ultraviolet part of the scale the spectrum and there's mm -hmm. the red the red side the, the infrared. infrared yeah that's right. and that's and you can get reactivity and adrenaline and all these juices body juices flowing with a crop or a cat of nine tails or some other um, mm -hmm. pain activity but you can also do that with pleasure and it's a little bit mm -hmm. different but they can take you to these extreme states where your body you kind of out of out of body experiences right. you know um, yeah. and I there is an allure to BDSM because yeah. you're you're always going to get a reaction. It's going to come right away. You're going to know exactly how much, if it was too much, if it wasn't enough, and all that kind of stuff. And and so there's kind of an appeal to being able to just like operate a person like a remote control. You know, like you know, <laughs> you know, you yeah. can just push them and they're going to you know make all the noises. Um, yeah. And and it's just it, if you think about that and and how increasing uh, the intensity of that will increase the intensity of the reaction you get. And then you rewind it precisely in the opposite direction. Mm -hmm. That is where the ultraviolet mm -hmm. aspect, metaphorically speaking, mm -hmm. obviously right. comes in, which mm -hmm. is like you just go slow, you right. go really slow. Yeah, because mm -hmm. really you don't want to go too hot too fast. You never want to go above someone's level where they start You want them to ache for the next thing that yes. you're going to do to them. You want right? them always expanding, yeah. always opening. Male or female, always expo yeah. <laughs> exposing. <laughs> always too. expanding, yes. Yeah. Rather than mm -hmm. contracting, yes. Yeah. For sure. I see all the notes, so keep going. Well, I mean, I think that's pretty much... Oh, okay, uh, okay. okay. so yeah. we I are mean. getting close to time, so I would love to ask the question. Please. Have you been in a situation recently or at any point in time during which you've been like, was that an orgy that you would like to unpack with us? You know, I would have been uh, a little more <laughs> like... I feel like I had a pat answer for that before, but it did. But I did have it. But it was interesting. Okay, so 
the pat answer is the dictionary definition, which I, which in my own brain made sense, and I looked it up, mm-hmm. and it was precisely the definition I found in the dictionary, which is yeah. sex with five people. Now, why <laughs> five people? In, in, in there why a, is it five? five, five I people. have an idea. Just so please. Like, yeah, yeah. Two couples okay. and, you, and so, one unicorn or stallion, yeah, whatever. It's so yeah. awkward that I know our mom is listening every time, like, all right, we'll and mom, 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 she's, she's fine. She's fine. Sorry, mom. Just move on. But, um, mom, you're you fine. Know, so anyway, mom, put in your uh, earplugs. Me and a past boyfriend, we went over to, like, another couple's house, and, like, you know, Jesus Christ, my mom's going to listen to this. So and they then, played Yahtzee. That's couples we exchange. Yahtzee. No, uh, <laughs> so basically, this friend of mine, you know, I had permission from the boyfriend I had at the time. He thought it was hot if I made out with women. So we did that. And then one day we went over there and we, we got a little lit. And then all of a sudden my friend's like, Teresa, you want me to eat your pussy? <laughs> and we were upstairs and it was like, well, sure. Oh, my God. I'm totally I'm guessing who this is. I'm an tuna tea destroyer. <laughs> so then, like, you know, she's doing that. And we're like, wee. And then our boyfriends come upstairs. And they're like, whoa, 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 what? You know? <laughs> and then we were like, come on in. The water's fine. You know? And then so we had, like, a d- different <laughs> positions happening. We kind of partner swapped for a little while. But then my boyfriend, you know, uh, he just got whiskey dick he got hella drunk he tried to pee in the closet um and Whoa, then, what huh and then, yeah and then, <laughs> there's always so, one there's always there's one. always one who tries then, to pee in the um, closet at some Good point Lord. like i see my friend's like head pop up on the side of the bed and she's like oh hey guys i hate to be a downer but my date passed out you know and then we're like oh yeah, yeah we'll stop we'll stop and then we put her on the bed and then like her partner went down and her and then, you know, my partner came to enough to just grab a tit and, you know, we each were on a tit and then, you know, <laughs> mad screaming orgasm. Right. Yay! Woo! Uh, but then afterwards, it was like, was that an orgy? I mean, we well, we kind of partner swap, but she started with me and then... Dynamic speaking. So, well, that's the thing yours yeah. is, is there's just so many different people around. It's not like they're all that happening is, at once. So my only yeah, question right. is, does it all have to happen concurrently for it to be an orgy? Or can you just yeah, have people I like lounging around? <laughs> so yeah, this is where yeah. we're going to have the philosophical debate. Yeah. I, for my definition of an orgy, if you're having two separate dyadic events, so dyadic mm-hmm. being one-on-one, sure. Mm-hmm. Um, then that does not count as an orgy. That's more like partner swapping. Right. That's so, what I thought. But if you're having two somewhat dyadic events where maybe feet are touching and bloody, bloody, blah, and there's a little bit of crossover, maybe you get your touch in an orgy town. Okay, maybe can, can maybe I bring you're up on a, the outskirts. Yeah. Maybe does you're it, in the Beaverton. Does it Beaverton. really matter, though? That's, that's really what I finally come down on is no. in the end... <laughs> Mm-hmm. I am not a fan of semantic arguments totally, because <laughs> they always totally end up just like matter. this. You but know, that's what I love about it is because it's like it is all semantics mm-hmm. and like yeah. as long as everyone's having fun, who gives a shit what you call right, it, exactly. right? Which, which so, you know, actually does kind of give the <laughs> okay. lie to a bunch of I've our I've been to super lame orgies. You guys. Yes. I just had an idea. Boom. We create language. Who knows who creates the next word and the next definition? Right. I think we should just start like a very deep probe, no pun intended, and <laughs> redefine it and send it to Webster's. Like we'll figure it out on our own, you know. <laughs> All right, and contest. We'll tell oh, well, now we have to ask ourselves what we want the definition of orgy to be, which is there you go. Includes this, becoming, doesn't include that. This is getting even more complicated. Okay, let's. Yeah. <laughs> I would like the Webster's dif- definition of orgy to be totally bitch an experience involving more than three people. Maybe that's it. Right. I don't know. I don't know because. I think any orgy should be awesome mm-hmm. All by awesome. definition. Mm-hmm. Like fun, just amazing. Yeah. So a lame experience, maybe we would we should say like, no, that's definitely not an orgy, even if there were 20 people involved. So orgy implies a level of satisfaction then. So if it's yeah. a, if no, there's, that's just me. If there's eight people and it <laughs> sucks and everyone leaves just like chafed and limp dick and, Whoa. you know, <laughs> dissatisfied, that was not an orgy. <laughs> I talked to someone recently who's like, well, really, by definition, it should involve food and sex. And I'm like, well, hell yeah. I know yes. who you were talking to, and that is not right. It, <laughs> there should I never know. be an open buffet at an orgy. I, I know. <laughs> because you're thinking, like, pubes in my ham sandwich, not good. I have right? a bad yeah. imagination. Exactly. <laughs> I agree. But I, it's a good after-dinner floss, the pubes. <laughs> but I would prefer to separate the events. Yeah. <laughs> right, right. I tend to think of it as five or more. And because... And and really just for me because four be, usually becomes two and two. Yeah. And usually mm. there isn't a whole that's, lot of that's the, crossover. That's the what makes so 
qualitatively what makes yeah. an orgy, in my opinion, like the times that I've been at sex parties where the feeling is different, like it mm-hmm. feels different. Uh, mm-hmm. Not that all of these aren't, you know, a, a person, a single person's exciting, being with a, th- a threesome super exciting, uh, a mm-hmm. couple's is exciting. But I got to be in an orgy a long time ago with like six people. So there's like six people total. And and we got, we rented a hotel room. Uh, we were young, rented a hotel room. God, we're young and good looking. <laughs> it was a long time ago. Um, still going, doing great. Well, yeah, yeah. Doing great. Yeah. You know, it's still like 20 years ago. Um, and we would, I guess we were so drunk and high and we've been there for so long and having sex for so long, you just roll over and you just laugh. You're like, oh, it's you. And then off you go. And it's like, you're not even, people are just, you know, jumping on the bed and we were eating cookies and stuff and uh, oh, smoking ciggies out the window. I kind of add fun. to that too, that, you know, um, if we have enough time. Yeah, yeah, um, that, we're like, good for, oh. So this, do we? <laughs> Okay. I guess we can just we're keep rolling for, for a while. We're going for it. But like I remember like when this friend first um she approached me and that same boyfriend, you know, in the beginning of my relationship with that boyfriend, um we were like, oh, I don't want this to get in the way of our friendship and um we were just afraid that like jealousy would start to happen and we didn't have this community or the skill mm-hmm. set back then. Mm-hmm. But then after like, you know, Jim Beam stuck his peg leg into the situation and, you know, helped to <laughs> lubricate our uh Jim you know, Beam's lubricating peg leg. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That lubricating peg leg. Yeah, watch the splinters. <laughs> Jim Beam, but, if you're watching, you owe her for that. Yeah, that's can't, right. You yeah. can't just steal I that. I still have splinters. Mm-hmm. But in any case, uh, what was enlightening about it was that the next day I felt like beyond fine I actually felt like more I felt closer to them and I felt more trusting because it didn't ruin our friendship and was this compersion yeah oh dun, my god dun, dun. Well, it's, it's also that tr- I've done it I've done comp- you did it that, oh my god you're such an enlightened <laughs> human but that actual <laughs> feeling that feeling of being through through the fire so to speak right yeah, so yeah, yeah. this is this is what yeah camaraderie is right is that you yeah. have a stressful situation with someone and you come through the other side mm-hmm. so it is it's a it's a strange but i think it's very similar to camaraderie and <laughs> yeah. and it, which it feels like the kind of thing where you go yay and you have drinks yeah. up, but that's not camaraderie is like a a really important thing you know and yeah. i think that's what yeah. like as sociosexual people in living in a world where we're trying <clears throat> to find alternatives to a kind of like you know monopoly uh mon- mon- monogamy monopoly on mm-hmm. the way that we live our relationships mm-hmm. you know we gotta experiment and gotta go have mm-hmm. fun so just it's very yeah. vindicating and yeah. um it, it feels yeah. like yeah it feels vindicating which is yeah. part of what makes it feel so nice and i'm gonna quote myself because it's tacky and i'm not kind of bitch. <laughs> damn but, straight you bitch. know uh when i was a stoner in my 20s and just constantly writing and didn't have this amazing circle of friends um i came up with this idea that your liberation lies just beyond your fear Mm. And I definitely find that again and again and again yeah. in my life that like there's that thing I'm fearing, even though uh, it sounds kind of good. And then when I do it, typically on the other side, I'm like, oh, you know, we yeah. got to the, you know, uh, I wanted to bring up that monster at the end of the book with Grover, but everyone doesn't know that. You know, when you, you, know, <laughs> yes. you keep turning the pages of your fear and you get to the end of it and yeah. there's nothing there. That book is you know? terrifying. Yeah. That, what, that book that? was terrifying. It terrified yeah. me too. That when you're three. Yes. yes, for everyone that remembers, what was that book called? There's a monster at, at the, the end, end of this book. book with, yeah. They Grover tell you at the yeah. beginning that it's terrifying. Yeah, yeah, yeah it is. It but was. it's but it's such a great metaphor for life because right. if you're running away from something that scares the shit out of you, if you just stop and you turn around and you face it, you will find out that that pit bull is a chihuahua. Or, right. or at least a middle-sized dog. Or you'll get mauled by a pit bull. It or, is, uh, or, 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 or maybe a small pit bull or, or have, something like that. Or, or you find or, you like pit bulls. Or, yeah. Oh, me, yeah. me next, me. Yeah. Okay, me. go. Either that or like you find at the end of it that you have the capacity to deal with it. You know, mm-hmm. we're, mm-hmm. we're just highly adaptive. And so, you know, we, what oftentimes what we fear is much worse than our fears. And we're so much more capable and adaptive of confronting that and, and not having, you know, this feared, traumatizing, disempowering experience. But actually, that is the catalyst to get us to the next level of bravery. Like, mm-hmm. I think I even heard that, you know, they, uh, in talking to soldiers of war and stuff, they talked about uh, courage is what you feel after the battle, mm-hmm. after you've survived. And then you mm-hmm. look back and you go like, oh, well, now I feel stronger and more capable. You know, yeah. I did that. 
it's not what you feel going into it. Like, oh, I fear nothing. Well, you bravery, know? I've always, you know, the, the quote that bravery, you can't be brave without fear, right? Bravery is overcoming yeah. your fears. There you true. go. I love it. I and now we, we have gone over an hour. Have we, we have. So yeah, yeah, yeah. we are out of time. So we will be a big see you next Tuesday. And see we will see you next, next Tuesday. Tuesday. Um, I won't. What do we so, have next Tuesday? Anyway? Joseph. Oh. Awesome. Well, that's to be determined still. Oh, okay. But yes, we will figure mm-hmm. it out. In the meantime, um, Joseph, do you have anything you'd like to plug on your way out? Like, as your as your like, like your anything you'd like people <laughs> to kidding. know Can about? I do that right now? <laughs> <laughs> you, you, oh, sorry. <laughs> do you have any butt plugs you'd like to plug before <laughs> on Not, your on your way? I kind of stopped doing all of the things when COVID came around, and I really haven't I really haven't been doing much. So I this don't is like ass play either. If you, if you want well, me to come, you know, talk about, I, I would love to be. I, I want to get more into sex education. So while sweet. I've enjoyed doing sex work, and we'll probably do more of it i think really it's this kind of thing where you know just talking to people about sex and um making better sex happen yes i'm uh, i can get so behind that and i can even give that a reach around yeah okay yes (laughs) yeah all right so if you enjoyed this program check out more um episodes on talkcastpdx.com and if you have any questions comments advice or things you'd like us to address on future episodes um, email us at was that an orgy at gmail.com. Um, and I would like to reiterate that this amazing hair, as well as the opinions expressed, mm-hmm. only mm-hmm. represent mm-hmm. us here in the room mm-hmm. and no other organization. Um, Same for or, these David, La- David Lee Roth pubes I have on my head. <laughs> yes, That's, David Lee Roth's pubes. That's what I was born with. I've got Do my not COVID hair going on there. Yeah. This. I love your COVID hair. Mm. It's amazing. Super sexy. Yeah. It is. Oh, it is. Yeah. We um, Anyway, goodbye everyone. See you next Tuesday and stay sexy and horny. Woo! Bye! Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well done. Well, do that hour flew by. Incredible. <laughs>